So as an introduction to probability distributions, which is 3.14, it's one of our external topics. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the types of distributions we'll look at and some of the key differences between them. So this is very brief, but um, we're going to be learning about binomial, Poisson, normal, uniform, and triangular distributions. And um, they kind of fall into two different categories. They're either discrete or continuous. And the ones that are discrete are ones like binomial and Poisson. And the ones that are continuous are your normal, your uniform, and your triangular distribution. And so what do we mean by discrete and continuous? Well, discrete random variables, because we use these models to basically random or model random events, such as flipping a coin, um, or how many people might come to your store in an hour. Um, and the discrete random variables, these are things that are whole values like counting. And examples of that would be trying to model, for instance, the number of people, or the number of wins that you might have in a game, or in a series of games, things like number of sandwiches, you can tell these are like whole objects that you would kind of count up, like I've won five times. You wouldn't say I've won five and a half times. Um, a half wouldn't really count, that would be a tie, it's different than a win. So we really think about discrete being, again, things that you can count on your fingers. And the continuous random variables, well, they're the other end of that. And that's any value or part of a value, like decimals. And examples for this one could be things like weights or heights. where we could have people that are 157.395 centimeters tall, or 157.49 meters tall. Um, and so you get all the values in between. <coughs> so with discrete, it's like counting in steps, one, two, three, and with continuous, you have to take everything in between. And you'll notice with the graphs, these ones are kind of smoothed out, like just a curve. And with the discrete, they're actually little bar graphs that kind of represent the idea that there aren't the in-between values. So for instance, with this probability distribution graph, I could take a look at, <coughs> down here, this being the number of trials, sorry, not trials, this being the number of wins, I could look at the probability of seven wins and read it off the graph, here's seven wins, the probability of that happening is going to be just under 0.2, so maybe I'll estimate that it to be point. 0, 1, 1, and the thing to keep in mind is that, remember, this distribution shows every possible outcome, so everything that could possibly happen. And with probability, when we think about totals, we should think about them all adding up to 1. So here, all the bar heights should add to 1 because that's every possible outcome is displayed there. So again, every possible outcome. And with continuous um, distributions, we often use the area. So we'll calculate the probability for a region. And for instance, here, the probability for this region, we've got pounds of waste in hundreds, um, between 8 and 14, so 8 and 14. Um, and in this case, that would be the area under that curve, so we'd have to calculate the area that would be equal, I should say, equal to the area under curve, the curve, between 4 and 8. So we actually have a formula that will calculate that whole shaded region for us. And you might remember things like this, the normal distributions from year 12. Um, and here again with totals, the total area under the whole curve should add to 1 to again account for every possible outcome that can fit in there. 
So those are two different main types of distributions. And again, we're going to learn about binomial and Poisson for our discrete, calculating things like the number of wins or the number of people that come to your store. And we'll then look at uniform, normal, and the triangular distributions for calculating like the probability that you get an apple between, you know, half a kg and one kg, something like that.